Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning and welcome to those joining us online. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost and also God's Work Our Hands Sunday. So if you see those few of us around in our yellow t-shirts, um, that's the day that the ELCA has designated as, hey, let's really focus on and um, service to our communities and remind ourselves, what do we do with God's grace? What's been given to us and how do we live into that in the world? Um, thank you to those of you who helped out with um, some cleanup yard work yesterday as part of our God's work, our hands. I've heard excellent feedback on that. Well done. Um, this afternoon, if you would like to help um, distribute the go bags that we've put together, you're welcome to help with that, just to our local neighbors here. Chat with Lynn, we'd love to have you help with that. And the library project was the other option that we had for service and that has been postponed because the library is not quite ready for us to jump in and help with them. That's the Coquille Library. So we'll keep you posted on that. Upcoming next Sunday is Rally Sunday, the beginning of Sunday school and the beginning of confirmation. Is there anything else that we should lift up here, Doris? A lot of people have been, okay, you there? Okay. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about book club. We were uh, off over the summer and we don't have a sign reading right now. We're just uh, getting together, talking about books that we enjoyed over the summer, recommending books to each other, 
Uh, we're getting, we've gotten to know each other's reading habits really well over the pandemic because uh, we've kind of been on our own as far as book selection goes. So we're getting together Tuesday in the fellowship hall at 2 p.m. And uh, anyone is welcome. Thank you, Doris. And we have a new setting for worship this morning, and I'll invite our choir forward for the call to worship. Uh -huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> I invite you to stand body or in spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is 513 in your red hymnal.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together a prayer of the day. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. 
Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. The first reading is from Exodus 32. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the, land, from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that the Lord brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed the Lord's mind and about the disaster that the Lord planned to bring on the Lord's people. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness. A sinner from my mother's womb. And did you delight in truth deep within me? And would have me known wisdom deep within. Remove my sin with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit The second reading is from 1 Timothy, chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost,
Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. The last time I had the opportunity to preach on this Gospel text, A loved one dear to me and my family was in serious condition in the hospital. Our life as we knew it was turned upside down. It was one of those moments when you realize nothing will ever be the same again, no matter what happens. My family and I could do nothing more than live in the present moment and take each minute, each hour, each day, one at a time. As we drifted through an endless sea of test results, unknown medical terminology, grief and uncertainty, people came alongside us to be our anchor. Between the incredible nurses, therapists, doctors, chaplains, and other healthcare professionals who tended to our loved one and their needs, to the love of family and friends that accompanied us as well. We were given a lifeline of food, comfort, and shoulders to cry on. It was not easy, but they made it a little easier. Enough to get through one day and then the next. When we were frozen by the magnitude at what was before us, we were seen and held and wept with. Our loved one was held in the reality of their mortality and finality, and so were we. And it was clear that if one of us were hurting, all of us were as well. In our gospel text today, we hear a familiar passage where Jesus tells a parable to religious leaders. 
They're grumbling about the kinds of people that Jesus is associating with. And so he invites them into the reality of the kingdom of God with this story. The kingdom of God is like a flock that is not complete until the one sheep that is missing is returned to the fold. When wholeness is divided, the shepherd searches to bring them all back together. The kingdom of God is like a woman who, when a silver coin has fallen through the cracks, she searches high and low until it is found again. When that which is precious is discarded in the dust, the woman shines a lamp into the forgotten corner in which it lays. Who does this story show God to be and how God shows up in our lives? What does the story say about humanity? How do we see ourselves or others as precious or not? This story is a direct response to the religious leaders and their feelings on who was worthy or not. Yes, the sinners and tax collectors are eating with Jesus. And it could definitely be interpreted as those are the people Jesus is talking about when he shares this story about the lost sheep and the lost coin. That those are the people being returned to the fold, swept out from the dust of a hidden corner and rejoiced over when they have been found. And yes, I think that's partially true. There is a specific type of reconciliation that occurs when a community joyfully embraces and welcomes those who have been existing only on the margins. But while I think this is one faithful reading of this text, I think there may be additional ways to look at it. What if the religious leaders are actually the ones being represented by the lost coin and the lost sheep? What if their inability to understand that the sinners they're grumbling about are infinitely precious to God means that the religious leaders are actually the ones who have wandered away and gotten lost? What if the lines they have drawn in the sand to distinguish themselves as worthy and therefore others as not worthy actually means dividing themselves from the fullness of life found in whole community? This is God's work, Our Hands Sunday. The one Sunday a year that many of us don yellow shirts, work gloves, and or an eager heart to serve our community, at least in a very public way. So thank you for your service to your community. Whether you participated in yard work yesterday, whether you will be participating in some of the projects here this afternoon, whether you found your own ways or will continue to find your own ways to serve, thank you. It is deeply appreciated and deeply needed. Thank you for living in faithful response to God's love. But how do we keep the service from being performative? How do we live into sustainable service past this one weekend? And how do we keep the focus on God's work instead of our hands? Because we understand our God to be the one who acts, who seeks us out when we are lost in the wilderness, who brings the lamp close to see our tear-stained faces who then wipes those tears away. We understand our God to be the one who picks us up when we cannot go any further, who carries us home, who rejoices in our togetherness and in relationship with us, who calls all people to mutual service and love. We understand our God to be the one who died on the cross so that nothing could separate us from them. Absolutely nothing. Because when one of us is hurting, all of us are. 
And we are not fully whole and in community with us and each other when all of us are gathered in. Just like the people who supported my family in our hard times, so too does God's love show up as you weed gardens, feed the hungry, work towards ending incarceration, prepare our community for disasters, and visit those who are lonely, and so many more things. Our service is embodied love, but only because it was first expressed by God and Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. You, beloved, have been swept up in the love of God, carried home as the angels rejoice and gathered into one community by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, God's Work, Our Hands, which is printed in the bulletin. It is to the tune of Earth and All Stars, if that's a hymn that you are familiar with. I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives, O oh God. Fill your church with faith and love and give compassionate hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious and interfaith commitments. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care, O oh God. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect all of your creation. We especially ask for your protection for all those human and non-human impacted by wildfires, floods, disease, lack of clean water, and rising sea levels. God of grace, hear our prayer. Remember us in your mercy, O oh God as our hurting world looks to you for justice. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Oh God, your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in need, including Lonnie, Leslin, Don, Eleanor, Judy, Ray, Jeff, Dick, Julie, Tony, Richard, and all those we name aloud or in our hearts at this time. In our joy and in our tears, be near us, O oh God. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, your work is done in this congregation and this community with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this church that we would serve our neighbors and welcome all people in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence, O oh God. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share COVID safe signs of peace with each other.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated.
All are welcome at this table. All are welcome to partake in this meal. Those of you joining us online, you're welcome to use whatever bread and wine or grape juice you have on hand. And those of you here in person, you picked up your cup on the way in, and I invite you to take it and open the side with bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And turn it over to the side with wine or grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or spirit for the blessing. May the God who surrounds us, the God who walks with us, the God who blows through us and unites us, go out with us, giving us light and life, courage and peace. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, hymn number 538. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.